In this problem, we are given the following circuit diagram. We are told that the voltage is our V of G, and it is 240 V RMS at an angle of zero degrees. Now, we need to find the complex power average and reactive power for the voltage source. Then we need to see if our voltage source is absorbing or delivering average power, and we need to see if the voltage source is absorbing or delivering magnetizing VARS. And to do that, we are going to use these formulas right here. They can be found in the notes linked below the like button as always. Looking at the formulas, we have our voltage and we are given our voltage here. However, there is a slight problem with that. We are given our voltage in VRMS, but we need this in VM or Vmax. So we need to find a way to convert this. Well, with the formulas linked below the like button, we know how to convert this. We are going to use the formula where we have our V RMS equal to our V max divided by the square root of two. Now we want to find our V max, so we're gonna to have to rewrite this formula. We are gonna have our V RMS being multiplied by our square root of two, and this will be equal to our V max. Well, in this problem, we're given a V RMS of 240. So we're just going to have 240 times the square root of two. And this is going to give us that our Vmax is equal to approximately 339.4113. So that is the first part of this problem done. And obviously we do not have an angle here, so the angle for our V is going to be zero. Now for our I, the way we need to find our I max is by using Ohm's law. Ohm's law says that, well, we're going to have some current equal to the voltage over our resistance, and that's going to give us amps. So now we need to find the total resistance or impedance. To do this, we are going to add the resistors and impedances together. We can see that the 5 ohm resistor is in series with the J20 ohm inductor. So we're going to add these two together like this. We are going to have a 5 plus J20. Because they're in series, we can add them together. Now this 5J20 and this negative J25 capacitor are both in parallel with each other. So this is in parallel with this. So we're going to use the formula for impedances in parallel, which is one over the first impedance plus one over the next impedance. And this is all being raised to the negative first power. Now to solve this, we would normally multiply this and then multiply this across, add them together, and then multiply the denominators. However, since it's a negative one on top, we're gonna to have to flip this. So we're gonna do the same thing where we're just going to um, cross them. We are going to add them, but we're gonna add them and then place them in the denominator because we need to flip them. So we're going to have a five minus J5. And then on the top, we are going to have a negative J25 times five. This is going to be a negative J125. And then we're gonna have a negative J25 times 20. Now, a J times a J is a negative one. So we'll have a negative times a negative one, which is gonna give us a positive. And then we are going to have 500 here. Now, this is equivalent to 500 minus J125 divided by five minus J5. And to divide both of these, we can convert them, or the easiest way to divide them is to convert them into the polar form from rectangular form. The conversion is that we're going to have our Vmax equal to the square root of our real number squared plus our imaginary number squared. And then we're going to have our angle equal to tangent negative one of our imaginary number over our real number. And this is going to be the polar form. Now, remember, when you are converting to polar form, you want to make an axis and make sure that our imaginary number and the real number are in the correct axis. The real number is on the x-axis, so for both of these, their real numbers are both positive, so it'll be right here and right here, and the imaginary number is both negative, so it'll be right here and right here. That means for both of these, we should get a negative angle, which we do. If we got a positive angle, it'd probably be over here, and we would just add 180 to it to get it over here. It's common practice. And now we can take our real numbers, we can divide them, and then we can subtract the denominator from our numerator angle. And this is going to give us approximately 73 with an angle of 31 degrees. So this is going to be the total impedance right here for this one 
two, and three all together. Now, it's in series with this fourth impedance. So since it's in series, all we gotta do is add them together. So we cannot add something that's in rectangular form to something that's in polar form. So we're gonna need to convert this back to rectangular form. Fortunately, we have a formula for that. The formula is that we're going to have our number, parenthesis, cosine of our angle, plus j times the sine of our angle, parenthesis. That's going to give us approximately 62.6 plus j times 38. And now we can add our 12.5 ohms. So we'll just add this into here as 12.5. And this is going to give us approximately 75.1 plus j 38. And this is equal to our z, our total impedance, but I'll just call it r of t. And then we'll just call this r of t. Now we know the values here, and we can just plug them in. So our Vmax, we know to be 339.4113, and our impedance to be this rectangular form. We don't want it in rectangular form, so we're going to have to convert this to polar form by using this equation up here. And also the Vmax, we meant earlier to have a zero degrees, because there's no degrees here. And that's gonna give us approximately 84 with an angle of 27 degrees. Now we're gonna to have to divide these again and then subtract the denominator angle from the numerator angle. And then if we do this, we're gonna get approximately 4.04 .04 with an angle of negative 27 degrees. And this is our I max. So we know our I max and our V max, remember this is an angle of zero. So now we can just plug them into the equations. For our P, we're gonna have the 339.4113 being multiplied by our 4.04 .04 divided by two, and then we have the cosine of zero minus our negative 27. This is gonna give us that our P is equal to 614 and our Q is equal to 307. However, we're not done with the problem yet, and if we plug these values in, we would be totally wrong. It's important to notice that with how this is set up, our voltage is going this way, from positive to negative. And in the notes, section 10.5, it is written that usually a source is supplying power. And since it's supplying power, the current is in the direction of voltage rise. So since it's in the direction of voltage rise, that means our current is going this way. And well, if our current is going in the opposite direction of our voltage, that means our S is going to be negative. Again, because the current is going in the opposite direction of our voltage. Voltage drop is not in the same direction as current. So now that we know this, we are going to have a negative, parenthesis, 614 plus J times our 307. And that means when we write this into our answer, we are going to distribute it and have a negative 614J, and then we're gonna have a J negative 307, not including J in the box. Now, is the voltage source absorbing or delivering power? When we look at the average power, remember power is P. So P, power, is gonna be this. Well, our power is then this. And our power is negative. And if something is negative, it is delivering. When we look at the magnetizing VRS right here, magnetizing VRS is Q. And Q is here. And Q is negative. So we are delivering. And that is how you would go about solving for this problem.